High profile semi final number two then India against England. The stage shifts from Adelaide 2022 to Guyana in 2024. This is Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Rick and Four Timeout, powered by Dish TV Watcher. Stephen Fleming, let's talk tactics, shall we? India with a very confident win against Australia. England have had their ups and downs. So uh, just give me your SWOT analysis of both teams and how they fared so far. Well, a good, a good semi-final. I, I think India have been dominant throughout. Did a good job through New York and it flexed a bit of muscle uh, in favourable conditions. I like their team balance. Uh, there's a couple of question marks on a couple of players, which we will get to. But overall, it's been quite a, a strong squad team performance. Uh, and, and that's put them in really good shape. Not a dissimilar story to England. They have had a little bit of bad luck against Scotland, put them under pressure. Uh, lost against Australia, but then a couple of really good performances. The one against the West Indies was quite dominant, and that was a game of real interest for me. 180-odd, it's a bit of an outlier in this tournament, and to have Butler and Salt get a little bit of time and play the way they did, I thought that was a really good sign. The big challenge for England now is their bowling combination. They've introduced a couple mm. of players. Jordan, in particular, uh, is he going to fit in? Was he just getting a game? How does he fit in? Who for? For Ward? Uh, Topley, Arch has done well. So that is another point of discussion. Well, let's get to that. It seems like England, whatever they do with their balance, it, it does affect some department or the other, whether they, with the inclusion of Chris Jordan, and he got a hat-trick in the last game, albeit against the USA. Does that seal his spot? Well, it, it, it could do if they're going on that performance. it would be interesting to know why Chris played in the first place, what they were looking for. Uh, and also, again, looking at the conditions they're going to face in Guyana, it's possibly going to be slow with a little bit of turn. The one thing they have got is, is good all-round skills, England. So when they put a team out, they bat long and they usually cover most bases. It's just going for the form horse and trying to pick the best bowler for the conditions or the bowler that is in form. So if they deem Jordan to be in form and, and would to just be out of form, then obviously it's a it's an easy discussion. But whether it was a, a, a resting Wood and getting him ready for the semi final, that is something we will have to wait and see. But that balance of that bowling lineup, the fast bowling lineup would, would be the uh, the head scratcher for me, the England camp. Um, Sammy Curran also came in and, and, and did okay. He has that balance. Livingston's in there. He can provide the spin. Mo and Ali has been a little bit short of runs, but another good spin option uh, against a, a right-handed attack. Uh, yeah, so good options, but it's just what they're going to do when they pull the trigger with that fast bowling lineup. Assuming the conditions in a day game at Guyana will be similar to what we've seen in this tournament, could be on the slower side, won't necessarily be a high-scoring affair. Uh, and you know the opposition being India. What's their best method to perhaps get an, an informed Indian batting lineup under pressure? We are surprised to not see Wood and Archer in the same team. But is there a merit in going back to that? Yeah, possibly. If they see pace as being something that can unsettle the top order, I don't think it will be. Right, Sharma in particular is pretty comfortable with that. They've got to get conditions right. And it's, there's no point. Velocity is good and can be very helpful but if the pitch is asking for more cutters and a bit more uh, a bit more skill and a bit more change of pace England have to make sure they, they judge conditions and personnel right and that will be a challenge when you haven't played down there Indian batting lineup is pretty well versed to all conditions they're pretty well balanced throughout there's no one real way of attacking them there's going to be pockets where they can attack but um, there's not sort of one set course that you can use and that's the beauty of that Indian batting lineup, which is so versatile and so skillful. They just need to back themselves again and back the spinners. If it's spin they go, then then back the spinners that they got. Don't try and get too funky with uh, having a little bit of left field um, selections. Just stick to your mm. main guys and the guys that have done well, even if they're out of form, stick to the guys that, that you think skill-wise can do the job and, uh, and just back them to the hilt, which can be an England way. Okay, just on the England's batting before we move to India, there seem to be favourable matchups against left arm spin. India have still not used Ravindra Jadeja much, and we're all wondering about his contributions. Are you expecting more of that in this semi final? And how do India prepare for what is likely to be more spin coming their way? 
Well, there's, there's a number of right-handed batsmen throughout that England lineup, which will enable them to operate with the two left-arm spinners if that's the way they want to go. And if they find favourable conditions, which we're expecting, and dry conditions, which we're expecting as well, then that could be an option that they go with cool deep as well. Um, they're pretty well versed. The fact we talked about it earlier, sometimes it's hard for two left arm spinners to operate together and both have success. XR has done it so far in the tournament, but in the right conditions, they can still operate. And if they believe the matchups against the right handers are there, then yeah, they'll they'll pull the trigger. I can't see them. Um, I can't see them going too far away from that because the side is so well balanced. They've got the good pace options, they've got good spin options, and they bat a long way down. So if they were going to make a change, I would have thought they would have done it earlier. But I'm pretty sure they had one eye on these conditions and, and possibly the final to having this team pretty set. Let's talk Ravindra Jareja, a player you know well, and his tournament still hasn't taken off, if it's fair to say. What would your advice be to him? Well, he's not going to change. And, and that's the thing. Some days... In, in, in some tournaments, he, he doesn't really feature for a while. Then all of a sudden, he, he'll get a four for, for 16, four for 20, and runs with the bat. And that's why he is such an effective player to have in your side. you got XR working away as well. You, you can combine the two and, and get a pretty good result. you just got to make sure that, in terms of an ego point of view, that, that cheering those overs and, and having someone doing the same skill set is not having a, an impact on either of them. And... When you've been the main man for some time, having both the roles shared can can often have play its part. So making sure the man management of that is is pretty sound. But you just can't you can't count him out. And if the conditions are, are right and the pace that he bowls is spot on, uh, he is going to cause some problems. So you know, I, I go back to to locking these guys in a wee while back and and then just looking at form, just rolling it out. Sometimes you have to wait longer. We talk about batting waiting longer in T20s because there's higher risk. Sometimes you've got to hang tough with the bowling unit as well. And Jadeja towards the, the back end of tournaments, his record's pretty good. OK, let's talk about another player you know quite well. Now, Shivam Dube, a confident shown in him and they've persisted with him. Hasn't quite had that one big blazing Dube innings that perhaps earned him this spot in the World Cup and, and what he's done for CSK over the last couple of years. He's growing into it. Your observations on what's working and what's missing? Yeah, just short of one, sort of a 40 or 50, 60 at, at that high strike rate. But he, he has come out um, with the right intent, which is important. And he he has the ability to hit sixes and change games. So if it's spin friendly, then he's definitely going to be a weapon. I really like the way they've used him. He's just he's put in there between, obviously, some fine players. But it, he has got that role to be aggressive. And, and Hardik Pandya, who's in form as well, you can then have a good crack because he is a match winner and you get close to two games left in the tournament. If he is one or two days out, then you'll win the tournament. So that that's a nice, uh, it's a mouth-watering position or person to have in your lineup, especially when the people around him are playing well. If you're a little bit cold either side, then it can sometimes be a problem, but there's pretty good form all the way through that Indian um, lineup. So therefore, he can be accommodated and he can also be playing that role where potentially he could win the match. Often he takes down a spinner of the first ball, and we've seen him do it successfully. Is the messaging the same in a semi-final like this against someone like Adil Rashid, who in the last uh, semi-final these two teams uh, played had a big impact? You want Dubé to take him down, but is it, uh, is it wise to tell your spin hitter to go straight away? Uh, not not that direction, but if he sees it in his in his spot, um, then then take him down. And so that that is the measure is having a, the clearest mindset that. If it's, if it's in where you think you can hit it for six, hit it for six. So all, all I would want from my players, if that's his role to be aggressive and, and he goes in and hits the first ball for six because it's in the right area, then then I'm a big fan. It's If you turn that down and look to be premeditatedly defensive just to get in, uh, then maybe that that's a little bit old school. But um, if he is of a clear mind and knows exactly where he wants to hit the ball and what ball to hit, then right from ball one, I am fine with that. And he has done that a number of times in the IPL. And it raises eyebrows and heart rate. But again, the logic that he uses is pretty sound. So if he's in the right space as he walks out there, then uh, then why shouldn't he be looking to hit the first ball for six? And that that's his role to a degree. Uh, when you come to the finals and you're playing some of the best in the tournament, uh, people might ask you to be a bit more circumspect. But 
again, you look at the positive side. If he does get away and change the game just with two or three hits, then that could be the difference between winning the tournament and coming fourth. Virat Kohli's form at all a point of concern? No. Okay, moving on. Uh, key phases that you think will decide this game? Uh, I, I, I think one, how, how England play Boomer. Um, he is just always there. He is a, a consistent and a constant and he needs to be played well if you're going to compete. Uh, how the top order, if England get into trouble in the top order, how the middle order go. Mo and Ali's been a little bit out of runs. Livingston, a little bit out of runs. Both really capable, but um, for India, they'll be trying to expose that middle order as quick as possible. Uh, and then both, how both teams deal if the other team gets away. So absorbing pressure and then being able to still counter strike or, or be defensively good. They both have the potential in their batting lineups to go big. But I, I think in wickets where it's going to take a bit of craft and a little bit of smarts, it'll be interesting to see which team plays the smartest game, still based with a lot of positivity around it, but uh, with good options and a good assessment of, of what the wicket is offering. Favourites then, Stephen Fleming? I think consistently India have, uh, have, have been the, the, the form side. Um, stressed two parts of the tournament. New York did well. Here, I, I think conditions will suit. They're much more suited to this style of play and have players that are pretty well versed in, in playing a, a a turning ball or a slow ball, which is what we're expecting down in Guyana. And I would expect them to to, to just be able to hang in there long enough. England's, oh, it's not not by much coming second, but a Butler or a Salt have a day out, then it's... Uh, yeah, then it's game on. So it's going to come down to individuals. But if you ask for a team, looking at, 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 a, at a team to pick, on paper, it's probably India in front. Okay. And finally, I forgot to do this a bit earlier, but your messaging to each coach, if you could, you could club it together. You have one semi-final with two first-time semi-finalists. And on the other hand, you have two teams with big reputations and the pressure of expecting to go deep and win it. Yeah, manage, managing the, the situation, the, the temptation is to go up and um, and try and do things a little bit better than before, whereas you actually have to drop down because the anxiety levels of all players go up and anxiety levels of coaching staff go up as well. So the temptation is to do more. So the message from the coach is actually to do less and what he needs to do is lead by that. So the training needs to be low key. Uh, the, the messaging needs to be low key. And if he can, the selection needs to be really consistent. So... Uh, just the, the cliched statement is play it like another game, but you actually have to, to really approach it like a, a round robin game or, or jam. Because when you say it's a big game, you've got to, got to do this. What does it mean? You have to bowl faster, you've got to hit it further. Um, you're actually just placing more anxiety on the team. So for both coaches, it's dropping it down a level and just allowing the players to be quite relaxed and quite comfortable. England. Uh, just that, that getting the team balanced. So the first thing will be from the coaching staff. The message from the coach will be, what, what do you think the best team combination will be for us? And then it'll be a case of, uh, of, of installing confidence, maybe to two or three players that are just struggling a little bit and just installing a, maybe a false belief that, that today's their day. But that, that belief within the English side will, will be pretty strong, in particular after the game against West Indies. So... Pretty simple messaging because this end of the tournament, most of it should have been done. So it's about your attitude and about your game day approach, which I would hope for both teams is, is pretty low key. Okay, you're pretty good at this. The final on the 29th will be contested between? Uh, it's going to be South Africa, India. All right, Stephen Fleming, thank you very much for your time and your thoughts.